Hello everybody, Andrew Cuneo here with another deck tech. This time it's going to be a White Red Spirits deck. This is a deck that I have tried in the past, uh, before Kamigawa cards came out. It was alright then, it was maybe missing a piece or two. And there's some cards in the new set that made me want to go try it again. So, this is basically a Tribal Spirits deck. It's all about trying to maximize Katilda Dawnheart Martyr. So you, all the creatures are going to be spirits, all the removal is going to be enchantments, uh, and that's how I've chosen to try to take advantage of that card. Let's go over the new cards. So the new card I'm most excited about in this deck is A.O. the Dawn Sky. It is a flying dragon spirit, 5-4 uh, vigilance for 5 mana, which none of that is great. I mean, that's all okay, but you, you need to be getting something more. And the more that this card offers is when it dies, you can look at the top seven cards of your library and you put any number of non-land permanent cards with total mana value four or less from among them onto the battlefield, put the rest on the bottom. Or you can put two plus one plus one counters on each creature and vehicle you have. So with this deck, you're mostly looking to use the first ability. And the reason I'm excited about this card in this deck in particular is I think that there are some 4-mana or, or combination of permanents that add up to 4-mana that are particularly good to hit. So I think hitting Showdown of the Scalds off of this card is excellent. That's one of the things that you're going to want. It, it, in just a sort of a game state that's a parody where you're not too far behind, ideally if your AO dies you're going to see a Showdown of the Scalds. It's the best thing to hit. If you don't hit Showdown of the Scalds, or if you're a little bit behind on board, you can also hit a Katilda plus a 1-drop, which is extremely powerful a lot of the time. Certainly if you have some other stuff in play, in addition to the AO when it dies, if you hit a Katilda and a 1-drop, your Katilda is probably going to be like a 4-4 flying lifelink creature that can grow even bigger on your, your next turn. So that is an extremely powerful thing to hit. You could also potentially hit a Skyclave Apparition, which is generally going to be able to exile one of your opponent's best cards, and you maybe get a one drop to come along with it. Or you could potentially hit if you're if you're getting two drops off of AO, that's that's not that exciting. I mean, you'll take it if those are your options, but the two drops don't lead to any particularly great combinations of things that add up to four mana or less. So AO is the biggest new addition. The other new addition is this Saga, which the front side counts as a enchantment, or the front side is an enchantment. The back side also makes a creature that's an enchantment. So this one, it's basically, it, it just fits in the curve. Uh, it doesn't, there's no specific synergies really with what this card does. It's just a cheap creature that counts as an enchantment. Uh, there are a couple things to note about this card, though. When you get to Chapter 3 and it exiles and then comes back to the battlefield under your control, it's got haste so it can attack right away, but it's leaving play and re-entering play, so it is going to trigger Stonebinder's Familiar. You do get a counter off of that, which is nice. The other thing to note about this card is the second chapter of it, which is the next creature spell you cast this turn comes with an additional plus one, plus one counter. That's informed my choice of 2-drop. I'm choosing to play Twin Blade Geist because it's got double strike inherently, so the plus one, plus one counter is better. In the past, I have also tried Fleeting Spirit, which is certainly better if you're playing against a pure control deck that is really trying to kill your creatures with removal as opposed to just build up a board. The Fleeting Spirit's probably going to be better than the Twin Blade Geist. But the Fleeting Spirit benefits less from the counter from Kamano. Also, the disturbed part of Twin Blade Geist, giving something else double strike, can come up. Certainly, if you're giving Katilda double strike, that is an extremely powerful play. Uh, if you're giving Ao double strike, it's a flying five-powered double strike vigilance creature, so that's just going to dominate the battlefield. If your opponent can't get rid of it, they're not going to be able to attack you at all, probably, and you're going to be killing them incredibly quickly. The other thing about the Disturbed thing is it does give you a second spell if you're trying to trigger Clarion Spirit. This is not the best Clarion Spirit deck in the world, for sure. You, you have a decent amount of one-mana stuff, so sometimes you're going to have a turn three where you can play Clarion Spirit and another one-drop. 
but a lot of the times the clarion spirit's really only going to make one or two tokens over the course of the game. Certainly, if you're looking at your showdown of the scalds turns, you're probably going to get a token on the turn that you start playing a flurry of spells you got off the showdown of the scalds. Uh, one other card that's a bit of a consideration is... I haven't even crafted one yet. This is card Atsushi, the Blazing Sky. So this is the red Flying Dragon Spirit. And it's a 4-4 four, four for 2 red and 2. And when it dies, you exile the top two cards of your library, and you can cast those until the end of your next turn, or you get three treasure tokens. I don't think either of those abilities is nearly as good as the first ability on AO. The other thing about this deck, and this is something I tried to do in basically any sort of aggressive two-color deck, I really don't want to have double-colored cards in both colors. Uh, so I've got a bunch of double white stuff. I really want to stay away from double red cards. I think it's going to make, you're, you're going to have to mulligan less. You're going to be able to cast your spells a lot easier if you can slant your mana in one direction. So that's another reason I'm not playing this is the double red. Also, this is an alchemy deck, even though none of the spells are only legal in alchemy. This is a deck you could just play in standard. Uh, in alchemy, there's just Town Razor Tyrant, which I think is just a straight up better card than this, even though it's not a spirit. If I was going to play a double red four drop, you would just play Town Razor Tyrant instead. Moving on to the mana base. So I do have Forsaken Crossroads in my deck. This is the only card that makes this an alchemy deck. If you want to play this deck in standard, I, you could just add some additional basic lands, like maybe two planes and a mountain, and it would be fine. It, it, the mana's not going to be quite as good as it is in alchemy, but it, it really isn't that big of a change. The other new cards that are in this deck are in the lands. There's one copy of a Ganjo, which is it's just kind of free to put in a deck where you're going to be playing this many planes anyway. It's not a super great ability, but every once in a while you can use it to kill a creature. That's fine. This deck also has two legends, Ao and Katilda. So you are going to get to cast this for a discounted rate some of the time, which is nice. Then there's two copies of Sokinzon Crucible of Defiance, which again, it, it's a legend. It's a free roll. The same thing that applies, or it, it triggers off of legends in the same way as Iganjo. It's a free roll. The other thing that's nice about this is it makes spirits. So you can, at instant speed, make your Katilda bigger. Also, we, I didn't really talk about the second ability that, that put two plus one plus one counters on each permanent. This deck can go somewhat wide, certainly if you're getting tokens off Clarion Spirit, or you're boasting with Usher of the Fallen, or you're making the one ones from Sokinzon. You might want to do the get two plus two, two plus one plus one counters ability every once in a while. It's not the best ability in the world, but sometimes you'll have boards where it's worthwhile. I started out with three copies of Sokinzon in my deck. I thought it would be just really, really strong in the deck. And I kind of found that it wasn't that good. I mean, it's still good enough that you do want to do it some of the time. So I've, I've got two copies, but I, I wouldn't play more than two copies. It's just the, the one ones are just not impactful enough in a lot of games to run the risk that you're sometimes going to draw two copies of it and you want them both to be playable as lands and they won't be. Moving on to the sideboard. The sideboard is a lot of removal spells. There's really, there's not that much removal in the main deck. There's Skyclave Apparitions and there's two Circle of Confinements. So once you know what you're playing against, you can kind of pick the right interaction for whatever the matchup happens to be. So there's portable holes. Those are going to come in against aggressive green creature decks where, you know, Werewolf Pack Leader, Rahilda, and Alchemy. You can also board them in against a lot of the artifact decks uh, where they might have Reckoner Bank Buster or they might have Oni, Oni Cult Anvil, I think is the name of the card. I mean, basically, there, there are a bunch of cheap artifacts people are going to be playing. For the same reason, there's Abrades. I don't usually board the Abrades in if I'm against a red-green creature deck, but... If I'm against a dedicated artifact deck or a deck that has a lot of small creatures, I might board in the Abrades. Divine Smite is obviously against people who are playing kind of black decks with Loth, stuff like that. Extra Circle of Confinement. This is a card that is primarily good against uh, Old Growth Troll. Or I've also played against other people who are playing Katilda. 
and I've run into people who are playing uh, rune based rune based decks with I think the card's called Light Eyes, where they're planning to enchant a, a small creature with a ton of runes. So that can get really large, but you can just take you can exile it with Circle of Confinement. This has some trinket text that has to do with vampires. It's generally a good card to board in against vampires, but it is not that that text is almost completely irrelevant. If you just ignored it whenever you were deciding whether or not to sideboard this card in, you'd be doing fine. Some Valorous Stances. Those are going to be mostly against uh, Dragon Stacks. They're also good against Hallbreaker Horror, although I haven't seen many people playing that. Uh, some copies of Guardian of the Faith, which it's nice. It is a spirit, so it's the right uh, tribe for this deck, even though the only real payoff for your things being spirits is Katilda. This is against people who are playing with sweepers, obviously. The one thing that's not stellar about this is it, it's really, as a three drop, it's not particularly good to hit off of AO, just because you really, you're valuing the comes into play ability to phase your creatures out with this card a lot. That's why it's here. And hitting it off of AO, it's not going to do anything. You'll obviously take it. It's going to be a three, two creature, but it doesn't have any special synergy there. Some Redanes also against uh, slower control decks, or if, I, I guess if you're in, if you're playing standard, p people are not going to be playing snow mana bases anymore with them banning a faceless haven. Every once in a while in alchemy, people might be playing snow mana bases, and certainly if you're playing against like a blood on the snow deck, regain would be good. I guess people could still be doing that in standard. I, I don't play standard anymore, so you'll have to use your own judgment there. And then one copy of March of Otherworldly Light. This is a, uh, I'm not really sure when to use this removal spell. I certainly want to try it because I do think it's a powerful card. I think if anything, this might be a removal spell that I'm really only going to be looking to have in my deck when I'm on the draw, because it is certainly a way that you can steal back tempo if you're on the draw in an aggressive creature mirror, which a lot of the matches in alchemy right now seem to be just aggressive creature mirrors, and you're looking for plays that can kind of break serve when you're on the draw to give you a chance to beat your opponent's good draws, especially when they're starting on the play. So March of Otherworldly Gaze, there's certainly going to be hands where you might want to exile their two drop on turn two if you're on the draw. You know, so you've got, you play your planes on your first turn, you pass, it's their second turn, they pay a werewolf pack leader. And I could definitely see it being worth it just to exile a card from your hand, just to get rid of the werewolf pack leader immediately. And not have to worry about it. It's kind of, it, it, when you make a play like that, it's like you're stealing the play. Because when you're on the draw, you are up a card, essentially, and now you're going down minus one card, but you're trading your turn one play for their turn two play. So that's a way to really gain a lot of tempo. Also, like I've said before, this is also just a nice card if you're looking for a spot on your curve where you can play two spells in one turn, which is another way to start coming back if you're behind. Uh, the other thing that is a good thing about this deck in that specific style of game where it's just both people are kind of flooding the board with aggressive creatures is Katilda can trump that a lot of the time. That is really the appeal of this deck is that your Katilda is just going to overwhelm your opponent's aggressive creatures. You know, they could have Reckless Stormseeker, they could have Townraiser Tyrant in play, and if your Katilda gets big enough, it's just going to trump all of that. You know, once your Katilda gets to be like a 5-5 five, five lifelink, a 6-6 six, six flying lifelink, it's really, really hard for them to win. And even if they somehow manage to get it off the board by trading with it, or, you, you know, you're forced to block with it in a way that it might die, you've still got the back half. So it's almost like you're guaranteed to be able to recast the Katilda the next turn that they after they deal with it. So that's where the power of this deck really comes from. So with that, let's uh, check out the deck in a couple of games. All right, perfectly reasonable hand. Obviously, this is going to give me white mana. I need... I'm going to need to draw a white mana in my first three draws, but this deck is mostly white mana. And there we go. Since I'm on the draw, I can get this into play untapped as a white land whenever I need it to be, but maybe I'll hit a bunch of running lands and I'll wind up scrying with it later on in the game. 
Probably not at this point. Three Catildas is a but is a bit much, but I appear to be playing against a white weenie deck, so they'll probably be quite useful. One thing about playing with this deck is you don't really want to trade off creatures if it can be avoided. Like that last turn I had the option of double blocking Thalia and trading my Clarion Spirit for Thalia effectively. But that's not really a very good trade when I know I'm going to be casting Catilda the next turn. I might want to look for a way to... I should be open to trading off my Catilda if my opponent gives me an opportunity to do that here. Just because... I have so many Catildas in my hand. So maybe I could bait them like that. I'm still in a bit of trouble here. Given that I drew the fourth land, though, I think it's all going to work out. This is what I mean about Catilda just kind of dominating these games. It's turn four, and I've got a 5-5 five, five flying life link in play. Well, I had one. It was nice while it lasted. What? Why didn't they go after my Catilda? Is it better just to block the token? Maybe it is. I keep getting my board bigger. I'm worried if I tr if I traded two things off there, what would have happened is this next Catilda might not have been big enough to dominate all of their other potential attackers. Come on, no Skyquave Apparition. Elite Spellbinder. That's mildly annoying. It's not that bad for me, though. One thing I can do this turn is I can potentially trade this Twin Blade Geist or Chump with it. And then next turn I'll be able to make this Katilda Double Strike. Let's just do this, I guess. Elite spell miners are mildly annoying. I guess I, I could have maybe attacked that turn. I thought the opponent would probably jump there, but I guess they didn't want to. Come on, no Skyclave Apparition. Brutal Qatar. 
I'm equally bad. Things are really taking a turn for the worse here. I'm going to be need, need to be careful now that the Brutal Cathar doesn't get to double flip and exile my uh, Catilda at some point. Should I attack with this Catilda? I'm worried that they would just block it with a spell binder in the Cave of the Frost Dragon. Which isn't that good for me. I think I can just wait and hope to get Rising Dawn on the Twin Blade Geist. They do have one counter on this Hopeful Initiate, so if it were to get a second counter somehow, that would be a way for them to interact with the Rising Dawn. Now I think I can attack with this Catilda because it's lethal. If they double block it with the Spellbinder and a Cave of the Frost Dragon, and then they have to chump this Catilda with their other Spellbinder, I think that's fine for me. Oh, wait, but that gives them a free attack that's a hopeful initiate, so they could destroy this Rising Dawn. I guess I can double block the Hopeful Initiate, though. And then force them into using it to get rid of Rising Dawn. And then I would be able to play this copy of Rising Dawn on my next turn. Alright, they just didn't animate their Cave of the Frost Dragon. That seems like a mistake from the opponent. It's pretty hard to... When are they going to have six mana to get value out of this card? They basically need to draw three or four mana cards off the top of their deck to have any hope of coming back. All right, a white weenie deck that is also a snow deck. Certainly want Circle of Confinement. I think I want Portable Hole. Braid seems good. That seems like a maybe. What's bad? Maybe I'll take these Kamanos out. I usually wind up boarding out some number of creatures to get all this removal into my deck, and that makes the Kamanos even worse. I usually take out the Twin Blade Geists as well. Or I do take them out a lot of the time. I don't have a ton of answers for Adeline, but I don't want to have Valorous Stance in my deck. Also, they're playing a Snow deck, but I think Redain isn't that good, especially in games when I'm going to be on the draw. I'm just going to cut two more Usher of the Fallens. Try to be a removal deck that's just trying to stall the game for Showdown of the Skulls. This is going to make my Catildas a little bit worse, but as we saw that game, they're still going to be very good. This is another perfectly reasonable hand. Gonna need some lands to deploy my hand, but I've got a two drop and I've got a removal spell, so I'm gonna have time. I 
Thalia really doesn't seem like it would be that good against my deck, but it was kind of annoying last game. It's going to be kind of annoying this game as well. I'm just going to play the Katilda this turn, even though it's not big enough to do anything yet. It uses my mana more efficiently. And if I wind up playing Circle of Confinement on the Brutal Cathar, it's going to jump up to being a 3-3 right away. I like this card a lot. It's a very good card, too. I'm going to say I was going to attack with Katilda this last uh, this turn because I wasn't really that interested in trading it off. But now that I drew a second one, I think I am okay with trading it off. Have another evangel could lose this game definitely. Or really, if they just have another creature here, so I'm, this can I'm, can be attacked by one of these, so they can have ten power worth of attackers right now. Sadly, the Thalia is preventing me from playing another Katilda plus a braid. Not sure why they're getting priority. They do have the creature lands in play. I guess that's why they're getting priority. Seems unlikely they have anything that does anything here. Even if they had a ganja, they would have just attacked into me, I think. And used the ganja to kill Ao after it blocked something. Sadly, Portable Hole is an artifact, not an enchantment, so it does not improve my Katilda. Why did I do this? Oh, that's terrible. There was no need to let that Brutal Cathar flip. I think it's going to be fine. Eh, maybe it's not going to be fine. They don't kill me this turn. I will have turned the corner. There were some missteps along the way, but in the end, the power of a massive lifelink flying creature is too much for this white weenie deck. Okay, 
this is a fine hand. The only thing that's awkward is, do I want to play my Sundown Pass turn one so I can be guaranteed Clarion Spirit turn two? I think I do. If the top card of my deck is an untapped land, it's a little bit awkward that I played this way because I don't curve out quite as efficiently. But it is nice in the sense that by keeping the Esther of the Fallen in my hand, it's quite possible if I draw a third land, I'll be able to go Circle of Confinement plus Usher of the Fallen on a turn, and I'll get a counter, or I'll get a Spirit token. It appears that that is not going to be the case. You can't get Colossal Plows with this in any way, sadly. This is quite the pairing I've received. So they can crew this. No, you can't crew this with the Hotshot Pilot. Oh, you can crew it with the Hanger? They don't seem to have the Hanger, though. They have Giant Ox. Okay. This deck really has a wide variety of things going on. Let's get that plow out of here. I didn't even realize they ramped into the key with the mana from the plow. That was actually kind of a busted turn three. Look what the opponent's got going on here. I don't know what the treasure vault's all about, but they've got all sorts of other stuff going on. This is another one I... I really think that these alchemy spellbook cards are, for the most part, very cool and interesting. Key to the Archive lost a little bit of the appeal because it was so heavily played that the spellbooks were less exciting, but the like stuff like Slayer's Bounty, it's just not quite good enough, but it is really fun. I don't, I don't think you can get a teleportation circle from the... Slayer's Bounty. You can get Teleportation Circle from the Faithful Disciple. This is the card they got from their Slayer's Bounty. Certainly going to attack. That's the easy part. The question is, should I Skyclave Apparition something? I think I should Skyclave Apparition the key to the archive. It's a little bit awkward because they potentially got a removal spell off of the key to the archive, and if they're able to kill this guy, Cleave Operation, they're going to have a 4-4. Four four. Oh, okay, they got Day of Judgment. It's a lot awkward. They do have the Circle of Confinement. So hopefully I draw a land so I can go land Catilda, Circle of Confinement, this Illusion token. <laughs> their teleportation circling the Slayer's Bounty so they can really see that I've got this Katilda. They know what they're they know what's in store for them. There's no doubt in their mind that I had a Katilda in my hand there. So this I, I have no idea why this is in the opponent's deck. Maybe they're an Oswald Fiddlebender deck? I guess it would make sense to be an Oswald Fiddlebender deck with the stuff they're playing, and that's why this is here. But either way, I'm going to board in a braid, and I'm going to hope to abrade their land. No mercy. Next turn, I'm going to have the option between Amiria's Call and Showdown of the Scalds. I think I'm just going to play Showdown of the Scalds. All right, I'm on a clock now because of the 
approach of the second sun. Hopefully they can't dig to it too quickly. Next turn, I, I might actually... I'm just going to kill them, probably. Because I'm going to be able to go play Katilda, keep this Katilda. This will get Legend ruled. So it'll go to my graveyard, so I'll be able to play as an enchantment. Oh, they have the Mech Titan... The Mech Titan core as well. And they're teleporting their plow. Well, this is the matchup I put all these abrades in my sideboard for. Portable hole also seems good. Do I want Redanes? Usually when I'm boarding in Redanes, it's I'm taking out Skyclave Apparition, but Skyclave Apparition actually seemed pretty good against their deck, so I'm not going to do that. We'll take out these Circle of Confinements. Maybe some stone binders familiars. Sideboarding is still tough for me with this deck. I'm not sure how much removal you can afford to have in your deck before you really start cutting into the synergies. Sand is awfully slow on the draw. I'll keep. It's not great. I'm guaranteed. So turn four, if nothing else, I can just make the spirits from Sokens on if I'd drawn another land. I also kept in part because my opponent is Mulligan, which makes me feel like there's less pressure on me to, to beat a good hand. This plow ox combo. What are they going to spend the mana on? Key to the archive. They had this is this is an impressive start. I don't know that it's an impressive enough start to justify having cards like giant ox and colossal plow in your deck, but it's impressive when it all comes together. So this they can crew the plow. Doesn't really do anything else though. <laughs> I was really wrong about them not really having a nut draw. I was going to have to be worried about beating. This was a, this is a very strong draw they've had. That was a really good draw on my part. Might actually be able to come back now. I assume this is Starnheim Unleashed. It's possible that it's Doomscar. I think they're a mana short of being able to go Doomscar crew the plow with the mech hanger.
Seems like this has to be Doomscar. If it was Starnheim Unleashed, I think they would have already cast it. Yeah. So the safe play is probably Kamano plus Sokens on. And just chump the plow. Is that the right play, though? I think AO might be the right play. AO allows me to start turning things around, so I can actually potentially turn on the offense. Either I'm going to block the plow with AO, and then I will get to untap with a board, more likely than not. Unless AO whiffs. AO could hit the Skyclave Apparition here. And we could get rid of this key to the archive. And maybe they won't even be able to do anything. Or AO could hit just a Katilda. Not the best. Not awful, though. This Katilda's going to hit pretty hard, probably, on my next turn. I'm set up to go next turn, Spirit Showdown. They're putting one of my Kamano cases, Kakazans, into a hole. They put them both in holes? Also, I just want to note that my opponent had this Divine Purge in their deck. <laughs> Divine Purge seems like an incredibly good card against their deck. I don't know. I I'm not on board with this Divine Purge idea, opponent. Turns like this are why I, I'm pretty sold that it's right to have the Clarion Spirits in the deck. It's just, it, it's pretty easy on the showdown turns to get an extra Spirit token. And the extra Spirit token is just, it's worthwhile. They'd seen enough. Tilt the Claims, another victim. Alright, I think I'm going to leave it there. I think that the, I, I don't know if this is going to prove to be a top tier deck, but it has been really powerful. I, I've actually won a lot with it on the ladder. I think I I've started at rank five and I finished at rank five after winning those matches. It's It's been really hard for me to get good matches on the alchemy ladder. There just aren't a lot of people playing in Mythic yet. So I, obviously like my that last deck, the, the Plow Ox deck, probably not a top tier competitive deck, even though it did, the opponent had put together a deck that was capable of actually doing some pretty powerful things. That deck was not as bad as its individual cards would make you think it would be. And then the first opponent was playing just, you know, pretty reasonable white weenie, probably not a top tier deck in alchemy, but not an awful deck either. So anyway, I do think that this, this deck might have some legs, so I'd encourage everybody to give it a try. And I'll see you guys next time.